Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Lance. We're coming to you from the Nature Center at Steel Creek Park. We are closed, of course, due to the uh, current coronavirus pandemic. Uh, but one thing we want to do is to start bringing you educational videos uh, so we can bring some of what the Nature Center has to offer to you at home. Uh, so over the next couple of videos, we're actually going to be doing some dissections of some animals that we've had in our freezer here at the Nature Center. Uh, and today we are going to start with everybody's favorite animal. We have got a black rat snake here. Uh, and Lance Jesse is our snake and uh, reptile in general expert here at the Nature Center. Uh, he's currently doing his master's work on snake anatomy, so nobody better to walk us through the dissection of a snake. Uh, and next time we're going to take you through uh, the dissection of a coyote. A uh, quick word about all of our animals we're going to be dissecting uh, here at the Nature Center. I uh, want everybody to rest assured that we don't actually go out and harvest these animals just for the sake of dissecting them. And in fact, the black rat snake here and the coyote next time, uh, we both found as road kills. They, they died accidentally, which is a bummer. I wish that didn't happen. I wish they were still out slithering around. Uh, and running around in the case of the coyote, but, um, but they didn't. So what better way to honor them uh, than by seeing what we can learn from their insides. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and turn it over to Lance and cut this thing apart. Alrighty, so let's get started. So the first step in any dissection, especially if you're gonna do research on it or if it's going in uh, collections, uh, you wanna take the, the weight and measurements of the animal. So here we have a, a scale that's in grams and we already have it uh, set up here. And I believe it is 1,137 grams. So if you can jot that down real quick in your notepad. So next we're gonna take some measurements. So usually there's two measurements that we do with snakes. One is snout vent length, which is abbreviated SVL, and one is total length, which is the total length of the animal. So SVL is from the, from the snout, from the nose, all the way to the vent, which is also the cloaca, the opening here at the back where they go to the bathroom and lay eggs and all that stuff. So if you wouldn't mind helping me uh, measure this, this snake, I'm going to have to do it in sections since it's not straightened out. Let's see. So while we're getting ready to measure this guy, let's just go ahead and make some, some general um, uh, observations about the external anatomy. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things that snakes uh, have in common with us mammals. Uh, they breathe oxygen, they, they breathe through lungs, uh, they have um, paired eyes and nostrils, they, they have a heart, they have a liver. Uh, but of course snakes are, are uh, different in some key ways as well. Uh, one of the things that we're going to see is, I'm guessing, uh, a great elongation of some of the organs because they're, they're um, fitting all the same organs that you and I have largely into a much narrower but much longer space. So some of the organs might be longer than you'd expect, uh, but they're all going to show adaptations for being compact inside the smaller space. Um, some quick anatomical terminology. Uh, you refer to the top of an animal as the dorsal surface, uh, whereas the belly uh, we call the ventral surface. Uh, the head end is, is anterior, the tail end is posterior. Uh, things along the uh, back or the midline we refer to as the axial portions of the animal. Uh, but one thing, one key difference that this black rat snake is missing, uh, it's missing the appendicular elements. I'll let you use context clues to guess what appendicular means. Arms and legs. Uh, but everything else, uh, we'll, we'll find some, uh, some similar structures in here that you'd see in a mammal or some other animals. All right, so if you can just straighten some sections out and I'll, yeah. I'll measure them. So we'll do this long section here. So it's 16 inches right there. Okay. I'll start from there. Uh, 14. Okay, that's 30, right? Mm-hmm. See, so that's another 16. So it's 46. 46. Oops. Oh, so we're just going to the vent? Yes, this will be the SVL, the snout vent link. Okay. That's 10. 
So 56, 56 inches. inches. We can convert that to centimeters and or millimeters yep. later on. We need to convert that now. Do we also do total length? Yep, so we can just measure the tail to get the rest of the length. Okay. Let's see. Is it not quite 12 or is it close? It's about 11 and 3 fourths. All right. So 57 and 3 fourths inches total. So that's 56. Or 67. 67, 67 and 67. 3 quarters inches total. Yes. Nice. All righty. So the next step will just be to cutting it open. So we're going to turn it over on its, on its back. Okay. And the easiest tool, or the, the best tool for this job, I think, is a little pair of dissecting scissors to, mm -hmm. to cut it open. What we're going to do is we're going to start from the cloaca and just cut a straight line up through the, the ventral surface all the way up to, to the head. Okay. Now let me, let me guess here and say it looks like this animal might have been run over uh, in this region Maybe. here. So unfortunately, that's going to obscure uh, some of our soft anatomy uh, in this thoracic region yes. here. So I'm, I'll be curious to see what we find in there. Also, while I'm cutting it open, I want to try not to pierce any of the organs, cut only the skin. Do snakes have skin separate from their scales, Lance, or are their scales their skin? Is this a trick question? No. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely asking um, for the folks at home. I've never really thought about it, but their scales are on their skin. Mm hmm So, I've always thought of scales as just like modified hair, yeah. or hair as modified scales. So I would say their skin is separate, but their scales are attached to their skin. I got you. And they might have dermal layers similar to we mammals have, yes. and so their, their scales may only be the, the epidermis. Because when you, you stretch out the skin, you can see, or stretch out the scales, you can see skin in between each scale. Mm -hmm. We also don't know for sure yet if this is a male or female, so we might be able to figure that out too. One of the differences between reptiles and mammals is you, you don't always have just a, a ready way of telling from the outside of the body. Just based on the appearance of this individual, I would guess it is a female. Uh, female rat snakes tend to be uh, thicker than the male rat snakes mm. with a shorter tail. Male rat snakes tend to be longer and thinner with a longer tail. But sometimes you don't know if you don't have multiple to compare. And we also want to go slice a little bit of the tail open, which can be a little more difficult. That should be enough. All right, so straight out of the gate, I'm seeing some uh, some respiratory anatomy, I believe. Yes. Am I right? Mm-hmm. 
So there should be a trachea in there somewhere. So, oh, I, I think I'm looking at it. Should be an esophagus somewhere. This right here, it looks like the, the cartilaginous rings. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should have a trachea here. That looks an awfully lot like mine and yours, except it's much longer <laughs> yeah. proportionally. Yes. Uh, shoot, well, not just proportionally. It's actually longer, it's longer. than our trachea, mm -hmm. even at the at the same scale. Let's see. If you open up the mouth, you can see that is uh, the trachea. Oh, that's where. It, so that's how they can have a mouth completely full of mouse uh, or egg or whatever their prey is, and Let's still see. be breathing out the lower jaw, the, the bottom of their mouth. Their trachea will basically stick out of their mouth a little bit while they're eating a, a large prey item. There's also a lot of musculature on snakes too. So a lot of this meat is muscles around the sides. Okay. So it looks like it does have some, some injuries in this area. Let me try to get the skin peeled back. You can definitely see around the outside on the skin here, it's all bloody. It's got some injuries there. Oh yeah. That's where it was probably hit. So one of the things that identif uh, as we identify the internal systems of a snake, uh, you really get a sense of how they're, they're put together um, in terms of like, where is their neck? Where is their body? Where is their tail, right? Those are things that uh, if we were looking at our pet dog or cat or pretty much any critter on the planet, you can identify those structures right away. Because uh, you have these external landmarks, arms and legs and ears, um, that, that help you identify those, those, those um, body sections. On a snake, uh, they don't have external ears, they don't have uh, external arms and legs, um, but they, they still have the same major body uh, segments uh, that other animals and especially other vertebrates have. Uh, so as we pointed out, this extra long trachea here mm -hmm. uh, that you can see from these cartilaginous rings, just like we have on our trachea, um, I guess you could consider that all of this is neck. Would that be yeah. safe to say? Mm -hmm. All right. Sometimes people refer to anything behind the head up to the cloaca, just the trunk mm -hmm. for a snake. All right, actually, let's pull that out. Is that what I think it is? Heart. That's what I was wondering. Yep. Ah, okay. Now, friends at home, you get all the, uh, all the experience and excitement of being on a, a real wild snake dissection and you get none of the smell. It's not, not my favorite part of this. It's not the best. No. All right, so what, what all are we looking at here, Mr. Lance? So here we have the heart. A heart. Uh, it looks like right out of the gate. Ah, okay. So here we have uh, snakes like, like other reptiles have a three-chambered heart. That's different from our uh, four-chambered heart. Uh, they have paired atria, I believe, and a single ventricle. Uh, I can't make out much anatomy on this guy. There may be a... Yeah, doesn't really look like much. No. Ah, oh, there's a big long liver, I'm guessing. Yeah, the big long dark organ there. I was going to say this guy right here. Or is that underneath some meniscus? I can't see what I'm looking at. Yeah, that's, that's all long liver, yeah. I think. Yeah, there's a membrane that covers up all this stuff on the ventral surface. Sometimes you gotta yeah, let's cut. get that off. So let's see. 
before we get down there, this trachea should go to a lung, right? Mm -hmm. You notice I said lung singular, because uh, one of the one of the space saving adaptations that snakes have, this is all still trachea through here, uh, is that is all snakes or most snakes only have a single functional lung. I think it's all snakes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can have a vestigial second lung. Of course, it makes it harder when, when the animal is, is deceased. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes those lungs deflate and so they're, they're tricky to find. So we do have the liver here, just big, long, dark organ. It doesn't look like much here, but it's there. Boy, you really get a sense of, of how, you know, the liver is one of the largest organs in any vertebrate body. Uh, and the same is true for the snake. Uh, the liver is gonna do for the snake the same things it does for us. Uh, it converts the snake's uh, metabolic waste, the, the waste that the cells generate from their activities uh, into uh, less toxic compounds. Uh, in the case of snakes, they convert that into uric acid. Uh, our liver converts our toxic cell waste into a different chemical called urea. Uh, but it also helps in the metabolism of fats because uh, the liver produces bile, uh, which is delivered to the stomach and, and is a, um, a digestive aid. Uh, so yeah, this liver is incredibly long and makes up most of that body cavity, looks like. Now here's a long uh, tubular organ uh, that's sitting just medial to the liver. That means beside. Uh, would this be... Descending from the stomach? Yeah, the stomach should this... run alongside the liver here. Okay, so that could be stomach, it could or, be the stomach or intestine. Or intestine. Um, if there was anything in the stomach, we would probably We'd know, know. It, what it was right away, wouldn't we? Peel some more skin back. Looks like we got some fat deposits here. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Ah, now we're talking. So this right here, I'm guessing, was esophagus. Mm -hmm. Leading into a large stomach. With some fat. And, and just like many of our mammal stomachs surrounding that stomach, is belly fat. I'm not gonna rub my belly, but I've got some too. All right. So it doesn't really look like there's anything in the stomach. Ah, oh, rats. It's a little black rat snake joke for you there. Or I should say not rats. <laughs> We're getting into some of the grosser stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm detecting that. All right, let's see what we got here. Some intestines. Okay, so these would be probably mostly small intestines I'm gathering. Mm -hmm. They don't look all that different from yours and mine. See, there should be a kidney around here somewhere too. But Do they have paired kidneys? Uh, I believe there's just one. Just, just one kidney. It's probably underneath some of this stuff. Pull it out if we need to. Not, who's this? No, no. There's also a gallbladder around here somewhere. Ah. There's something. Ah. 
So now this is, uh, I've done some reptiles before, but I've never dissected a snake. I know when you dissect a mammal, uh, you find those kidneys, they're not in with the, with the, the organ mass in the abdominal cavity. They really sit uh, far back and, and attach to the, the dorsal wall of the abdominal cavity. I, I don't know what to expect in a snake. This is all new, new for me. I think this is the gallbladder. And oftentimes when snakes are frozen, it's pretty, pretty big. Yeah, when snakes are frozen, the gallbladder bursts open and you'll see a bunch of green staining on there. Mm -hmm. It's the bile. Yeah. So a gallbladder is an interesting organ. Not not all vertebrates have it. Uh, when it is found, it's it's found associated with the liver close by. Of course, in in mammals that have a gallbladder, uh, it's it's actually tucked between two lobes of the liver. Uh, but this is an especially important organ for carnivorous animals uh, because while the, the bile that the liver creates is used in the um, digestion of fats, uh, the liver produces that in, in small but, but, um, uh, but steady quantities. What the gallbladder does in animals that have it, uh, it stores that, that bile uh, to be released in a large quantity all at once uh, to help digest especially really fatty foods. And if you think about the nature of carnivory versus herbivory, um, you know, yeah, sure, some plants are high in fats, but generally speaking, plants are, are not fatty foods. It's, it's meat is where you find most of the fats and you find the need uh, for, for storage of bile in a gallbladder. Would this be part of the urogenital system here? Looks like it. Looks like a clear sac, mm -hmm. uh, which is oftentimes what the, the bladder or something similar looks like. It's a large intestine down mm -hmm. here, maybe. Yeah. So we got this mass of small intestines. It's leading directly into a, a single large intestine. Trying to find the kidney. Now, another thing, I, you're the pro at this, Lance, but uh, you know when I've handled live snakes in the wild, one of the first things that most of them will do is musk you. They this one already has, you know, I was, it's dead. I was gonna say, they have a stinker gland. Uh, it's not as strong as skunk spray, but it's, it's a pretty obnoxious smell. And I feel like when you got into this uh, lower abdominal section, we're really starting to get that musk yeah. stink. You can see some of it coming out of the cloaca. Is that, is that what that is? Yeah. Does this look like a kidney to you? I don't know. None of this looks <laughs> like a kidney to me because I'm used to seeing nice mammal kidneys. Yeah, the picture looks very odd for a kidney. Is it long and skinny? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. My goodness. Wow. It's not so, the same color though. No, but yeah. Don't know if that's large intestine or kidney. No, see, I, I was just assuming that this right here was large intestine, but according to the book over here, it looks like this right here is, is the kidney. Uh, elongated, like a lot of their other organs. Mm -hmm. And just one. And just one kidney. And I noticed the book said left kidney. Mm -hmm. so. do, do all snakes only have a left kidney? Mm -hmm. So we have the cloacal organ right here, this light colored organ. And you can see when I push on it a little bit, a little bit of musk and gross stuff comes out of the cloaca. Mm -hmm. So that's always fun. So now let's, let's talk more about this cloaca. So um, the cloaca is a singular point of entry exit on the underside of the snake. You're telling me that that is where uh, Waste is excreted, but that's also the reproductive entrance? Okay. Yep. So if we were gonna be able to tell this uh, was male or female, I'm guessing that somewhere around there is where we would tell, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a male would have what's called hemipenes, mm -hmm. um, and a female would not. I've actually never tried to look, yeah. so I'm not even sure how to look. Yeah, well, I always just felt like it was rude. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Well, 
Well, I assume it's not a male. I think that would be more obvious. Yeah, the, the hemipenes are a, a paired structure, right? Just on the inside of the cloaca. Mm -hmm. And even though they're, they're not readily visible when the snake is just out slithering around, they, they usually don't hide if, if you're actually in there, right? So the fact that nothing's jumping out on us makes me think that your initial assessment was correct. This was probably a female. Let's see, I'm gonna take these scissors. Do you have an idea of how, if this is a female, how would you know for sure? Well, what's interesting by, by looking at that, I, I can't tell straight away. Uh, the only time I've ever seen anybody sex a snake was on a live one. And they, yeah. they just sort of like push with their thumb. And if it's male, the hemipenes just sort of just kind of pop out. Uh, I'm Cause you can probe a snake and figure out if it's male or female, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure how it's actually done. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing nothing jumping out. So, and the rest the rest of the tail is just basically just meat. Yep, it's just just meat and bones, right? Yep. Where'd you find the snake, Lance? Found this one dead on the road in Piney Flats. Piney Flats, Solomon County. Yep. So this is a. I actually thought it was alive when I first saw it until I got up close. Tried to rescue her. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we should we pull all this viscera out? You want to? Let's do it. Let's see, might have to be in multiple pulls, but sometimes it'll come all out at once. See, I'm gonna have to- Well, stand back so I don't catch any spray. I'll have to cut the, the trachea here because that won't be able to come out. Let's see. That was not an added audio either. That's the sound that it makes. All right, so this is a great time to, to tie this in uh, and actually be able to compare apples to apples, uh, vertebrates like this snake to a lot of the other animal kingdom. Uh, so you notice that Lance here just expertly peeled out all the viscera in just a single, you know, that horrible sound all the way out. And it's left uh, just a, a singular now empty body cavity behind. Snakes, along with mammals, along with birds, along with fish, and along with most invertebrates of the world, um, even uh, insects and, and lots of the other invertebrates, are in a group of animals that we call coelomates. And that's a weird word, uh, coelomates with a C. And what the coelom refers to is just a large central body cavity that houses most of the viscera. So we are coelomates, this snake here was a coelomate, and, and all of this viscera just peeled out and left behind, what Lance? Muscle and bone. 
muscle and bone. So we have snakes have ribs, just like we do. Yep. Snakes have more ribs than any other animal in the world, I believe. Uh, and you're now looking at the ventral side of the vertebrae. Uh, they've got the same backbones that, that we have. Uh, and you really get a sense of just how much of a snake is muscle. Uh, they are incredibly strong for their small size. Especially rat snakes, because they're very good climbers. These guys are good climbers, and to kill their prey, they're constrictors. So they have no arms or legs to handle their prey, but they have body muscles to squeeze the life, you know, right out of the, the prey animal that they're eating. Uh, so this gal has definitely got some, some strong abdominal and uh, thoracic muscles. Look at that. Yeah, it's blowing up like a balloon. <laughs> all right, so once again, here's our viscera. We've got this right here is all mesentery. Uh, the the coelom uh, cavity of, of coelomates is uh, oftentimes surrounded by this uh, uh, connective tissue here. Ooh, there's all the injured parts. There's yeah, you can you can definitely tell where the injury happened. So there's that three chambered heart going on down to the stomach. There's at least part of this is gallbladder, we think. That's, I think that's, that right piece here. right there is the gallbladder. Yep. All the way on down into uh, large intestine, uh, urogenital system, and then out the other side. Too cool. All right, so now, Lance, we did this uh, so folks at home could have something interesting to watch, uh, and hopefully you learned something along the way. But we didn't just do this for fun. What, why did we do this to this snake here? This snake is actually going into our uh, research collections or osteology collections. So it's gonna end up as a, a skeletal specimen, just the skeleton, and we're actually gonna preserve the skin as well. So uh, future researchers who wanna do uh, research on snakes can come utilize our collections for that purpose. Terrific, so it's, it's helpful for research institutions like the Nature Center to have what's called a comparative collection. Uh, and for us, uh, Lance and I are, are both uh, students of bones primarily, uh, skeletal anatomy. Uh, and so to take this snake, which is muscle and skin and guts, and turn this into a nice collection of, of bones, how do we do that? Uh, there's a couple different ways. Uh, typically, the way uh, we do most of our animals here is a process called maceration, which uh, we skin the animal completely, uh, get all the organs and all the guts and all that stuff out like we've done here, and then we uh, let it soak in, in water for as long as it needs until all the meat is uh, uh, rotted away and rotted off, and then it just leaves bones. You pour off the, the gross water that has all the meat and stuff in it, and then you're left with all the bones, and then you can uh, let it dry and wash them off and clean them up after that. That sounds like a really stinky job. It can be. Uh, it makes me glad that uh, here at Steel Creek we have 2,300 acres to hide macerating <laughs> specimens in. It helps diffuse that smell. It's always best to do that outside. All right. Well, great job. Well, we've had fun today. Um, got. Uh, uh, th so this, this specimen is not done. It's going to continue its afterlife uh, assisting with uh, research projects uh, for us here at the Nature Center and future research. So uh, once again, just want to reiterate that uh, this animal was, was run over by a car. We can find that injury here. Uh, we don't collect wildlife at the Nature Center uh, unless it's what's called a salvage. We collect it if it's already died of natural or accidental causes. Uh, so we, we are sad that this animal has left uh, the world of the living, but we are excited uh, that we can learn from it and study and research it in the future. So uh, check back with us next time. We're gonna dissect a coyote uh, here on this same table and we'll compare it to some of what we've seen on the black rat snake.